And we're in the Old Testament book tonight of Job. We're in Job chapter 14. Now you take your time and find the place. The book of Job chapter 14. And we're beginning to read from verse number 1. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. And dost thou open thine eyes upon such an one? And bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bonds or his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him, that he may rest, till he shall accomplish as in hireling his day. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. And though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground. Yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. But man, but man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? Big question. Where is he? And we know that the Lord will bless that reading of his own precious truth. I wonder tonight, friends, have you ever considered, or I wonder if you've ever thought as to where you Stand right now. Right now. I wonder, has it crossed your mind tonight? Right at this very moment, right now as you're sitting in that pew listening to me, I wonder, has it ever crossed your mind? where you are standing right now. I wonder, can you guess where you are standing right now? Well, I'm going to tell you tonight where you're standing right now, right at this very moment, you're standing on the edge of eternity. You are standing on the edge of eternity. That's a fearful thought, but it's a truthful thought. Right now, where you're sitting, I can tell you now you're standing on the very edge of eternity, of God's great eternity. You're standing 
at the very end. Do you realize that tonight? Does it trouble you to think right now you're standing on the very edge? Aye, the, the very edge, the edge of eternity. You don't have to be on your deathbed to be standing on the edge of eternity. And you don't have to be 110 years old to be on the edge of eternity either. There was a man in, who was dying of cancer in Irvinstown in County Fermanagh. It was harvest time because there was a Presbyterian minister who came from Belfast to go to Irvine's town to take the harvest service. And this man used to be the minister of this church many years ago. After the service was over, he went round to see this man who was dying because him and this man was very great friends. This man was unable to get out of his bed and the minister was talking to him and says, ask this question, what is it like for you to be on the edge of eternity just where you are? This man was saved. He was prepared to die. But the minister said to him, tell me, what's it like to be on the edge of eternity? Do you know what the wee man turned around and says, your reverence, you should know all about it. Me, he said. Me know all about it. Yes, your reverence. You're just as much on the edge of eternity as what I am. On the way home that night, as he made his way home to Belfast, on the old Dungannon Valley Gully line before the new road was placed, some of you may know where Finley's engineering is. The minister was on his way home. It was a stormy night. And a branch of a tree fell across the front windscreen. And the minister died there and there. Little did he know that he was closer to the edge of eternity than the man dying in the bed. And I'll tell you, you don't know just how close to the edge you are. This day, 28 years ago, the 26th of October, 1986, a young man by the name of Kenneth Johnston, Kenny Johnston we called him, a young man at 23, just married, married about a couple of years he was, with one child. Kenneth Johnson was sitting in his car having lunch, in his boss's car, having lunch with a sales representative. They went to the chip shop, and they came, and they sat in a wee lay-by there on Rainy Street, Mackerfeld, opposite the high school, and they were having their lunch. When a motorcycle with two men on it came, the pillion passenger gets off. And he shoots Kenny Johnson down like a dog. Do you know why they shot him for? They shot him because he worked for Henry Brothers, who done work for the security forces. Kenny Johnson and the wife were a lovely young Christian couple. He was buried this day 28 years ago in the cemetery in Cookstown. And if you go to Kenny Johnson's grave, do you know what's wrote at the very bottom of it? Now, this is what's wrote at the very bottom of it. Are you listening? Fellow traveler, stop and think. I'm in eternity. You're on the brink. Fellow traveler, 
passing by. Fellow traveler, stop and think. I'm in eternity. And you're on the brink. 23 years old. I want to bring to your attention tonight three facts concerning the edge of eternity. The edge of eternity is a fragile place, a very fragile place. You see, you don't have much to stand on. I can tell you something now, there's not much holding you as far as where you're standing now, where? On the edge of eternity. Do you know what 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 3 says? It shows you how fragile the edge of eternity is. Do you know what 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 3 says? There is but a step between me and death. The edge of eternity tonight is a very fragile place. It's not one mile away. Listen, listen, love. You're not one mile away from eternity. You're not even one meter away. You're one breath away. One breath away from eternity. And mind you, as you stand on the edge of eternity tonight, you remember this, it will not take much to put you over the side, over the edge. Be warned tonight, the edge of eternity is a fragile place. You don't know, nor I don't know, there could be a wee clot going around your body at this very moment, a wee clot. And it only takes a wee clot to take you. I mean, the night Tommy Cooper died live on stage, it happened in front of me. He went down like a light and everybody laughed because everybody thought this was Tommy Cooper acting the leg. He wasn't acting the leg at all, he died in front of millions. The edge of eternity is a very fragile place. I'll tell you where, how every sinner walks. Every sinner is walking over the mouth of hell on a rotten plank. But George, I go to my church every Sunday. Do you know I hear that all the time? Surely I'll be all right because I go to my church. If you're depending upon your church and keeping you out of hell, I'll tell you, it's like walking over hell on a rotten plank. The edge of eternity is very fragile. The next time you stand in the shower and you're giving yourself a wee bit of a scrub, you remember there's only a wee thin piece of wire in the fuse box that's keeping you from getting fried and electrocuted. That's how fragile the edge of eternity is. You're driving home in the car tonight. Listen, there's a wee quarter of a pipe underneath your car. It's the brake pipe. And there's a wee drop of fluid. And that's... Friend, what stopping you from going through the hedge or causing an accident? A wee drop of brake fluid. And all it takes is that wee pipe to burst and to send you into eternity. I'll tell you, the edge of eternity is very fragile. Very fragile. 
And the Bible says, For what is your life? Your life is a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then it vanisheth away. I'll tell you, the edge of, the edge of eternity is a very fragile place. Boys, it is. But it's a very fearful place. It's a fearful place. The Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 16 brings us there, and He makes us look over the edge of the edge of eternity. And He lets us see at first hand how fearful eternity is, I'll tell you. Beverly brought us there. The place of weeping and wailing. Do you know there was a man in Luke 16 and he lived just the way you and me lived? And the Bible says, and he died. He died. You see, a whole pile of people think it all ends at death. You die like a dog and you go out like a light. And that's the end of it. Well, I can tell you, my friend, you know what the Bible says? You know what the Lord Jesus said? Take a wee look over the edge. And he says to you, see, take a wee look. It says there, after death, he lifted up his eyes in torments. It's good to get a wee look over the edge to see where you're going to dear. And it's good to get a wee look over, your, over the edge to see where you're going to sir, because you're going down if you're not saved. It's a fearful place, the edge of eternity. And you'll see that this man, he lifted his eyes in torments. I'm telling you, this man, he lifted his eyes in torments. And I'll tell you another thing, he lifted his voice too. He not only lifted his eyes, he lifted his voice. And he begins to confess. He begins to confess his feelings. I am tormented in this flame. I'm telling you, every person who died unsaved is confessing the same thing right now. Right now, there's people in hell confessing the very same thing. I am tormented in this flame. And you're only one breath away from it yourself. Ah, oh, friend, this evening, and not only does he confess his feelings, he cries for mercy. He says, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. I'm telling you, he's too late crying now for mercy. He should have cried for mercy while he was alive. Ah, oh, but he had no time for mercy, I'll tell you. He has time down there now for it. He not only confesses his feelings, not only does he cry for mercy, he calls for water. He says, he says, send Lazarus, send Lazarus, that he may dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. That's all he wanted, one wee drop of water, a drop on his tongue. But he was out of reach. He was out of time. That's what happens when you go over the edge of eternity without Christ's love. And without Christ, sir. I am tormented in this flame. Tell me, did you ever get a wee born? I'm telling you, it's nothing but pleasant. Here's one for you, but don't try this at home. You ever hear this? Don't try this at home. You'll take my word for it. You light a candle sometime, a candle, and you try and hold your finger in that flame for one minute. You can almost feel the pain at the very thought of it. Hold your, the end of your finger in that flame for one minute. You hold it, do you see how long you'll hold it there for? You couldn't. But you think of what the reality of hell is when your soul is continually being 
engulfed in flames. Aye. You see, that's hell tonight. You can't bear the thought of the point of your finger being held in a flame for one minute. You think what it's going to be for your soul to be engulfed in flames for all eternity. It'd make you think, wouldn't it? The edge of eternity. It's a fearful place. Very fragile place. Very fearful place. And this man in hell, he not only confesses, he not only cries, he not only calls, he's concerned. He's concerned because the Lord Jesus, when he let us look over the edge, you know what it says? He cried, send them to my father's house, Lazarus, for I have five brethren, lest they come to this place of torment. Send them to my father's house, lest they come over the edge and join me here. You know what Abraham said to them? He says, sorry, they've got Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. You know what God's saying to you now? Now you listen to what the Lord's saying to you now. I don't know, but this is the reality of it. If you have a loved one in hell tonight, this is the reality of it. I'm not here to mince my words. I'm here to paint the picture as it really is. If tonight there's someone who loved you dearly on earth and tonight they're in hell, do you know what they're crying? Send somebody back that they may warn them. Do you know what the word will come back? They've got George McConnell down there in Kilkeel to tell them. They've got William Bingham in the morn. They've Stephen Johnson in the Presbyterian. And they've Stuart Finlay over there. And they've Ken McGrath in the Church of Ireland. Let them hear them. My servants I have sent to warn them. But you know the problem is, you are not listening to us. Not listening. You're only one breath. Just one breath away. from going over the edge, the edge of eternity. Can you see now what lies over the edge? Boys, when I think of my worldly days, you know, when I was a young fella, I still think I'm a young fella. But I remember them days, you know, going to the Valley Hotel, dancing a Friday night in the Silver Birch in Oma on a Saturday night. And if there was anywhere on, you'd have went somewhere else. And I loved the old discos and I loved the old dances. And here's me dancing away like a good one, you know. I could dance, you know, you didn't think I could dance. And I danced away. And little did I know, I was dancing on the lid of hell. I was dancing on the lid of hell. It's a fearful place. The edge of eternity. It's a fearful place. It's a fragile place, but I'm finished. It's a final place. See, once you go over, there's no coming back. Once you go over the edge, and there's no coming back. Because the edge of eternal eternity is final. You see, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed. So that they which would from thence pass from there to us, they cannot. And once you go over the edge, well, there's no coming back. It's final. Man dieth, aye, wasteth away, 
Aye. Where is he? I remember preaching one Sunday night in Drumlock Presbyterian Church, and I was early, and I'm a big fan of walking around the graves. Oh, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yes. And see what date and how they died and what age they were. But every time I looked at a grave, I asked myself this question, where are they in eternity? If this day next week I happen to stand at your grave, and mind you, I could be, where would you leave me answering that question, where are you in eternity? Well, I'm finished, but I want to bring you to one more place, and it's to the cross. Standing between you right now and eternity is the cross. And there on that cross, the Lord Jesus died to save you. He suffered the just for us, the unjust. And my friend, tonight, the Lord Jesus, who died for sinners and who died for sin, friend, this evening, he cried, it is finished. And he died on that cross. But on the third day, he rose again. And tonight, that Lord Jesus who died there, and that Lord Jesus who rose again, he's in this very meeting tonight. Christ is in this meeting, in the power of his Holy Spirit. And he says, come to me. Come to me before you go over. Come to me. Will you come to him tonight? Remember, the edge of eternity is very fragile. Remember, the edge of eternity is very fearful. Remember, the edge of eternity is very fine. Will you come to Christ tonight before you go over?